Hi, welcome to part 24 of my 100% Lilith playthrough. As I mentioned last episode, I did a little bit of farming off camera. We didn't get anything too crazy. The biggest improvement would be on our class mods. As you can see, got a new Plaguebringer and the Firefly class mods. Same old Spectre, unfortunately. Also got a Tormentor and a Defender class mod. Big upgrades there. I farmed for quite a while, probably like uh, an hour or two off camera doing the Hyperion loot room. I killed Craw a few times. Unfortunately, I could not get a 60% HP boost shield. That's all right. Still have this 40% one. I did did get an extreme corrosive and fire resistant and a high shock resistant shield. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to use these because there's not a whole lot of enemy diversity in Borderlands 1. Survivability isn't a problem for Lilith in most cases, but I thought I'd hold on to them just in case. Managed to get a little bit of a better mercenary class mod as well. It's the one I've got equipped right there. Anyways, that's enough of that. We have an underdome to take on, so I think the first thing we should do is respec and maybe get some new duds because it's been an awful long time since I've changed this. I mean, there's so many choices, it's kind of hard to pick. They outdid themselves with the cosmetics these they really did i don't know i feel kind of weird using the mask because of recent historical events so i'm gonna go with this 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 nice beanie here all right well i picked three colors you know i just i i don't have the foggiest idea where to begin trying to make this look good so i just kind of went with the pooper trooper call it what you want you know whatever uh, I, I named it thunderdome because that's how i'm feeling today i'm in a fun kind of mood if you know what i mean also going to reset our skill points here i want to take a look at our build make sure everything's in order i should mention some of the weapons i got when i farmed too I really didn't get a lot of new weapons. I definitely got a few. Like, I got this Nidhogg here. Got all the Gearbox Legendaries because I killed Craw a few times and he drops like two to three per kill. Mainly what I got was upgrades for gear we already had. Got Invader as well, which I believe goes through shields. Could be wrong about that. I know there's a repeater pistol that does it. I hope this is the one because that's going to help us with Guardians a hell of a lot. Also, this, I wanted to mention this. I got an 18.8 fire rate stinger from killing Craw. Up until recently, I didn't even know that these existed. I thought the maximum fire rate you could get get on an SMG was 17.6. So I'm very happy we found this. Obviously, it's not the greatest stinger on the earth. It's not super high damage, but the fire rate, it sprays like a hose. It's kind of insane. I also went and grabbed a Sledge's shotgun just to have it. Sledge's shotgun's a great weapon, and that is everything. So let's do the build now. Going to spec into our skill, obviously. Quicksilver and Spark. Going to want both of these. That gives us fire rate and elemental effect chance. Need both of those. Definitely want Intuition as well. That's essential. And Phoenix. Get five in that. Definitely want five in the Slayer and in Enforcer. Want five in the hit and run, high velocity, and blackout as well. These are all great skills. Definitely the right trees, the MVP. Now we've still got 21 skill points to spend. I'm going to start with Diva. Increases the capacity of our shield. Definitely want inner glow as well for the HP regen when we're phase walking. Hard to get for the cooldown. And mind games is a very useful skill for mobbing, especially since we're going to go do the underdome. This is absolutely essential. That leaves us one more point. So where do we want to start putting that into? I think I might do phase strike. Have one point into phase strike just so I can start getting some melee kills you know when i go out of phase walk just use a melee attack feast your eyes that is going to be the build for the thunderdome excursion we're about to embark on gonna go to the bounty board right here i'm gonna accept the mission complete five rounds in each coliseum now we get to choose which one we want to start at i gotta kill a lot of things with a lot of different weapons so let's get in here and let's get working on it oh man round one wave one everybody the very beginning these are the guns I'm going to start out using. Got a Crux, got a Mauler, got a Volcano, and then there's our Anarch in case we need to dump on something real quick. But I'm trying to get a little bit of a diverse set of weapons, if you know what I mean. Alright, wave one completed. Steel Mauler's putting in a lot of work. Wave 2 complete. I am keeping track of how much time I spend in the Underdome total. I don't think I'm going to actually have enough storage space on my computer to record all the Underdomes, especially with the special challenge being 20 waves per round. I had no idea it was that bad. I'm going to have to do 300 waves after I do the 75 prerequisite waves. I thought these were bad. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to make it. We had a lot of progress on our assault rifle kills there. First badass wave. What do we got? Is it going to be a real badass wave or is it going to be just three mobs? There's a lance technician and a lunatic. A bandit desperado. So, so far, not one badass in the badass wave. Very nice. Now, that's a badass. I burned to death before I get to him. Yep, there he goes. Wow. Just his mask remains. Nope. No, it doesn't. Never mind. It's Reaver. Oh, there he is. All right, I can't kill him right now, so I'm gonna go hide. I'm gonna start out with the corrosive. Oh, now we got the badasses. Okay. If you guys didn't know, 
Putting corrosive on an enemy in Borderlands 1 works kind of like slag in Borderlands 2. Now, I had no idea about this. I saw a morning after kill video the other day and I learned this. I believe it's somewhere about 5 to 15% extra damage if an enemy's corroded. I believe he's corroded now. Something is anyway, so I'll go in. Yeah, he's corroded. And yeah, just shredded him. Now, obviously, we didn't have like a control, so I don't know how fast it would have worked if I didn't corrode him, but it worked very well when he was corroded, I'll tell you that. I wish I could like look at the enemies, but I'm constantly engulfed in flames, it's pointing. Pointing to this hole in the wall. Is it a government spy camera? Is that what you're trying to tell me? All right, round one. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. I need to get to the next one quick, fast. The nice part about them spawning skags is if they also spawn bandits, they'll fight each other, which means they not only group up, but I don't have to kill as many of them. Actually, that's not a good thing anymore. I need all these kills. You sons of bitches. Oh, you missed me. I'm thoroughly enjoying this Steel Mauler. The Glorious Havoc has about 100 less damage, but also a couple more fire rates, so I believe it's going to do worse since the damage difference is so big, but who knows. Why is the intermission so long? Oh my god, finally. The rounds really start taking a long time to come once they start rolling a fucking modifier every time. That's what really drags the rounds out. Killing the mobs is the easy part. Waiting for the intermissions in between, now that's the real challenge. Somehow I didn't realize this until just now, but we're not getting any XP at all from these enemies. Meaning our proficiencies are out the window for this, which is just absolutely wonderful. Now I hope that doesn't mean we don't get challenge progress in here, they couldn't be so evil as to do that to me, right? I'm a complete imbecile, we had the sniper rifle modifier on that whole time, that's why this gun wasn't doing as well as the other one. Well this will be a real test now, actually this isn't a real test because now we have elemental damage only, which is just fucking ridiculous, I guess I'll get the crux out then. A little bit of shotgun challenge completion. And corrosive, I definitely need the corrosive. Yep, 1163, okay, so thankfully, these do count towards our challenges, but no proficiency XP, which is very, very unfortunate. What I'll probably do to farm the rest of my proficiency XP is just farm Cromerax, to be honest, because that way I can maybe get our Pearl and our Hybrid while doing it. Seems like a good idea, and maybe knock out three birds with one stone. Now this guy can be a little bit tricky. I'm just gonna corrode him and his boys real quick. Go into phase walk. He might just die from the dot damage, to be honest. Look at that, he's draining. Oh, I died. I, he hit me instantly as soon as I went out of phase walk, but that's not a big deal. He also vaporized. Sniper rifle challenge again. Okay, I'll switch to my snipers then. This is probably a good time to mention that I have not been able to find a goddamn Orion sniper rifle the entire game. I don't know what it is. I found practically four or five of every other legendary sniper, but the Orion has eluded me. Didn't get it from Craw, didn't get it from Hyperion Loot Room, didn't get it anywhere. I don't know why. Oh my god. Well... Uh, yeah. What, what, what sniper was this again? The Cobra. I mean, I know it's the sniper challenge, so they're doing more damage, but that's still a little bit excessive. Oh, my bad. There you go. Pop on our Spectre class mod. It's not the greatest one in the world, but it is 80% more sniper rifle critical hit damage. And wow. Never mind. Maybe I won't use snipers. I think I just remembered why I don't use snipers. Haley? How much melee do I do? Oh, that's pretty decent melee damage there. I hate to do this to you guys, I really do, but I think the Underdome is gonna have to be a two-parter. Due to my storage limitations and my mental capacity limitations, I just think splitting it into two episodes would be best. Criticals ult- wow, I just shot him so hard he fucking disappeared. Skull Masher's a little bit too powerful. Take out his big boys. Come on now, burn, you gotta burn. Come on, Wee Wee. Take your punishment like a man. Surkov out. Oh yeah, that kills. Little space time distortion was still there. King Wee Wee might very well be the most powerful character in all of Borderlands, you know, with his magic little stick there, whatever it is, you know, it's in the ground now. I don't know if it's just like, oh, it must just be like a saw blade, actually. That means the power comes straight from his flesh. He is a god, not a man. SMG challenge? Well, you shouldn't have. You really shouldn't have. I don't need that. And it's the starter wave. Man, this is just kind of sad what they're doing here. You know, it's a double anarchy. You just point, hold the trigger for a second, not even a second. Usually, just usually I tap fire it because holding down the trigger wastes ammo. My reaction speed can't keep up with how quick the enemies die, so I end up shooting more bolts than I need. That's the only issue you run into when using a double anarchy. Uh, note to self. Don't use detonating stingers. Okay, calm down, everybody. Let's just calm down, take a breather. You got there. Yeah, you see, you don't want to be using one of those, man. That's not going to get you very far. No. You see why you can't kill me is your fire rate's 
This guy, on the other hand, he almost took me out. You see what he had? He had an SNS fucking havoc on him. Too bad they don't drop their weapons in here. Well, it's working. Oh, yeah, I got my sniper rifle challenge. I wait back here. That's not the sniper rifle challenge, but it's a step in the right direction. I know doing this in co-op would probably be way quicker, way more efficient even than doing it solo, but I'm doing these achievements myself, goddammit. The sniper rifles aren't cutting it. So let's switch it up a little bit. We'll do pistols this time. How's a double Thanatos gonna do? That's what I thought. Double Thanatos is absolutely ridiculous, especially the one we got. We managed to find just a, an ungodly double Thanatos, really. 11.3 fire rate, 78 mag, just a fucking beast. All right, double Thanatos. Man, the mag size is just nuts. Never had to look away from him. I'd say the Underdome is going quite well so far. I'm only a little bit upset. Double modifier now. Enemies regen health, and I lose health. Well, that's just so nice, isn't it? Not like it'll matter in the face of any of my weaponry, my awesome weaponry. Yeah, that's just, uh, very good damage, I'll tell you that. I always thought Lilith was the best character because of how great she was with SMGs and just kind of guns in general. You know, a bullet velocity increase, gun damage increase, up the ass all over the class tree. But, you know, you don't even need guns to kill en enemies as Lilith. You can just use Phoenix, and all you gotta do is walk next to him. Oh, enemies are more likely to dodge and they regenerate health. Okay, I don't think that's gonna matter though. In my experience, enemies never dodge. I mean, they, they say that they dodge more often, but I feel like they just don't. Like... He didn't dodge. This guy right there, he didn't dodge. Alright, dodge this. I don't know, guys. Something tells me they're not dodging. You gonna dodge? Dodge, I'm gonna shoot you. I'm going to shoot you. Yeah, I mean, come on. If that's not proof, I don't know what is. Who's shooting at me with a fucking Orion now? Rubbing it in. I'm having quite a few brushes with death. Now, it's gonna be very, very unfortunate if I end up dying during one of those big challenges. One, one of the 20-round ones. I don't know how much they set you back when you die in one of those, but if it's like this, then they set you back to the beginning of the previous round, I believe. So if I'm on, like, round 3, wave 20, they might set me back to the beginning of round 2 if I die. Which would just be, I mean, I don't know. How, I don't know how I'd handle that news. Anyways, this is a badass wave. I think they've got good shields or something, and they're still taking less damage, but like I said, masher. Okay, wow. He was going crazy on me. He was doing some, like, voodoo magic and shooting me. This is the last enemy, I do believe. There it goes. Badass wave done. Now the final wave of the final round of the first arena. You guys see those stats down there? 1355 damage defiler. I couldn't believe I got that thing from Craw. Just an absolutely ridiculous defiler. Anyways, Cobb's got a rocket launcher, so I don't want to take any chances with him. Getting corroded. Get the Thanatos out. Okay. Well, I tried. I really did. Not a lot you can do when you're surrounded by his constituents. And he's got a rocket launcher. It's okay, it's okay. You can't get me, you can't figure me out. I'm right behind you. Oh, you didn't see me though. And... There he goes. Too easy. That is the completion of our first arena. It took roughly 40 minutes to complete all five rounds, so not too bad. And this is also my first time on the game in a little bit. I've been pretty busy, so I haven't played a lot of Borderlands recently. Meaning I'm a little bit rusty, so hopefully we'll get better. We'll get faster as the arenas progress. If not, 40 minutes for an arena isn't too bad. You scale that up times four for the challenge arenas we're going to have right there. And you're talking roughly three hours per arena. So that's going to be nine hours, I'd say minimum. I don't think we can do less than three hours in arena, maybe. But it's going to be tough. And that, like once the modifiers get crazy, like it's going to be a real challenge, I think, in these. But, but who knows i don't know i've never done them so i couldn't really say but yeah uh nine hours of underdome just saying that kind of leaves a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth this arena right here is the only silver lining for the entirety of the mad moxie underdome dlc in my opinion i'm not saying it's necessarily a good time doing it here but i really do like the map i like the environment it's not too bad you know I oh yeah Oh, wait a minute. I'm not consuming ammo. Thanks to Phoenix, we also get a lot of shots out of it sometimes. I think I just fired four or five times out of this two mag revolver without having to reload right there. Wow, not using any ammo right now. It could be the case that that first arena took a little bit less time because it was smaller than the other two. I know it's definitely the smallest, so hopefully it doesn't take much longer for these other two. If it does, I'll know. I'm still keeping track of the time, so I'm going to do it for every single run and tally up the total at the end. As usual, the Defiler just completely eviscerates Crimson Lance. I mean, it's the bane of their existence. It really is. If there's a Defiler around, the Crimson Lance aren't. It's kind of like bug repellent. Oh, who could forget Bonehead? I'll sure show him some appreciation, don't you worry. He's gonna start blasting us now. Get him corroded there. Switch over to the Thanatos. 
I'm not too keen on being blasted by him the whole time. That's okay, I don't need to worry about that. He's gone. Ooh, yeah. Swapped out a couple weapons here. Went with the Violence and the Sucker Punch now. Two gearbox weapons. Now the Violence is just a very good revolver. As you can see, this completely wrecks everything. Oh, too bad about the Tinnitus. I believe that's for explosive kills. Wonderful. Using the Violence and the Defiler is definitely going to be our best bet for getting challenges done. That'll get our pistol kills plus our corrosive and explosive kills done, which are all challenges we definitely need a lot of progress in. I didn't realize we were so limited in terms of dealing with Guardians. We are getting fucking lit up. They have just sent a ton of them at us. Like, look at all these. This is fucking insane, guys. You need to go this crazy on me, did you? Pull a hive mind out on these bitch asses. And I killed myself. Well, I guess I'm the real bitch ass. So, all right right back in it yeah i uh okay i need to quit using this thing because i'm a fucking dumbass and i'm just gonna get myself killed go with baja's bigger blaster tk i need your power i need it now okay okay baja's with us we will be victorious this day there we go wave complete too easy okay taylor cobb again not what i want to see because he's got a rocket launcher and anything with the rocket launcher is harder to deal with than i than you'd like get the baja blaster out Okay, there we go. Dead before he could kill me. Those boss fights are always a little bit hectic. I'm not sure what the best way to handle them is. The best way to handle them is probably not to run right up in their face every single time. I should probably just hang back a little bit and try to take some pot shots. Maybe let the mobs run to me and take those out. That would definitely be the smarter move. I think I need to start doing that. Too many close calls and I'm not looking for a setback. That would be tragic. It really would. Horde wave and headshot bonus. I think I'm going to get me some melee kills right now. There we go. There we go. There we go. Getting the hang of it now. Oh, what? I guess I burnt them all. Okay. I pity whatever sad soul slithers out of these curtains. Okay, he's got to reload now. Yeah, I know your gun works, Flint. Oh, come on now. I missed. There you go. Fuck you, Flint. Flint is dead. Decimated even. Mangled. Unrecognizable. When they ship his body back to his bandit camp, they'll say, Who delivered this ground beef? Not, oh no, it's our captain. Can't forget that after I do the challenge, I'm gonna have to go back on playthrough one and do the normal arenas all again. At least I don't have to do the challenge again, but you know, doing more Underdome after doing 375 rounds of Underdome? Ah. It's Guardians again, Invader time, Invader time. All right, please be what, you, what I think you are. Ah, yep, not at all what I thought it was. It does not invade anything. That's a shame. Guess Baja's bigger blaster is going to have to get us out of another pickle. All right, we got Reaver. Going to stay back a little bit. Take pot shots at him. Get his boys drawn out. Want to take care of the ads first. Because those guys are going to mow me down. There we go. All right, he's all alone now. Get him all. And he one-shot me. That's not good. Hopefully I don't die here. Mm-hmm. He one-shot me and walked away. Now we got to restart from, uh, I think, the beginning of round three. Round three, yep. So we just got set back ten waves. I'll be right back. I'm going to go cry and sob for a minute. Okay, just finished the badass wave on round four, so we're back to where we started right when I died. Uh, I haven't spoken one single word since then. I've just been a little bit distraught is all, but now uh, now we're back, so let's not die to this boss again. We got Master McCloud. All right, no problem at all. Round four completed. Ooh, the fruits of our labor. We got a lightning death. Oh, no, no. There's always a straggler right over here. What's up, man? There we go. And now it's the final wave of the final round of our second arena. Let us hope and pray that we don't get fucking shit on by this boss, because I will cry, I will. Hopefully it's not a hard one. I'm hoping for Bonehead. Give me Bonehead. Nine toes is even better. There we go. Arena 2 finally completed. And what do we get for our effort? Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. There's our certificate of badassery. Thank you very much, Moxie. That means fuck all. I'd wipe my ass with this if I could. And now I'm just going to sprint right into Arena 3. I'm not going to think about it because if I think about it too much, I might not do it. Come on, I can't. I'm starting to think about it. Let me in. Okay, we're in. The goalie. This has got to be my least favorite of the three, mainly because it's kind of big and difficult to traverse unless you kind of camp the teleporter there. That's a little bit annoying because a lot of the times the enemies don't spawn up here. They spawn in the middle of the map. Looks like I chose right this time, fortunately. We got a few enemies spawning right next to us. Also, that last arena took us approximately 50 minutes to fully complete. We had a 10-wave setback, so that's not too bad, I don't think. Probably roughly the same if we didn't get set back. I would assume that this map is probably going to take us a few minutes more than the other two at least just because of how big and fucking stupid it is 
There we go. I am become death. I think I just got the 10,000 killed enemies challenge completed. Let me look there. Yep, kill 10,000 enemies. Okay, the horde wave and the enemies are supposedly dodging again. So let's see. I mean, am I crazy? And thinking that they're just running straight at me and eating these bolts to the head because I, I just that's what they're doing right they're not they're not dodging shit they don't dodge shotgun challenge and it's the badass wave we'll see how sledge a shotgun does against some of these quote unquote badasses hmm, did some damage oh that did a little bit better and he fucking launched yeah that's the way it should be and since i have phoenix it actually shot three times on that second brute there i don't know if you guys caught that or not that's that's pretty crazy i didn't realize it'd work like that even on these weapons that shoot in one trigger pull but i guess i should have known all right come on now wow that was a quadra he fucking launched you should not be alive my man you are one lucky boy Oh, he did die somehow. Okay, he got caught in the crossfire. Keeping the shotgun modifier. Wonderful. Gonna use the sledges on the poor soul that walks out of there. Wow. That's poetic. Well, it's sledges shotgun v sledges shotgun now. What's it gonna be? Okay, take out all of his boys. Wow. Just fucking decimate some sledge. Don't run from me. Come on now. You should be able to withstand it a bit better than that, Sledge. Why are you getting launched back so far? Isn't this your shotgun? Don't you have any domain over it? There's probably better ways to kill Sledge than doing this right now, but there's definitely not a more satisfying way. This could be the final burst. Nope. Now this is the final burst. Oh, there he goes. Right over the fence. Why is the floor all gooey? There we go. We got a challenge completed for our corrosive kills. Finally, round five badass wave completed. Only one more to go. Oh, it's Bonehead. Okay. Yeah, I'd say he's cooking quite nicely. And there he goes. That is it. That is all three of the arenas completed. And so this one took us 34 minutes to complete. Not bad at all. Actually, our quickest one. I guess I just kind of got better as time went on. So the arena size didn't make too big of a difference in the end. There's our third certificate of badassery. At least we get a skill point now for having beat all three of the arenas. That's not too bad. It's not like we need another skill point. I mean, it's not going to give us a whole lot. There it is regardless. And here is the end of times. Four, five, and six. So I think... I'll start on the gully, and then I'll go to Helberbia, and I'll finish on the Angelic Ruins, because that's my favorite, and I think it'd be the, the best to save it for last. I like to save the best for last. I think I'll leave this episode here and save the main event, the big, big arenas, for the next episode, so that's going to be one giant thing. This was just the warm-up round. That being said, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please leave it a like. If you disliked it, please leave it a dislike. There's not a lot to talk about in terms of progress today. We did one mission, bring our total up to 385 out of 432. We also got some challenges done. No achievements or anything else this episode, so that's everything. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you on the next one. Have a good day.